Dinosaurs are some of the most fascinating creatures to have ever walked Earth. It's a shame that we won't be able to have Jurassic Park, where we can see some of the coolest creatures come to life. But we are actually living with some creatures that are just as old as dinosaurs, such as crocodiles and sharks. They haven't changed much since they appeared millions of years ago. But most dinos didn't make it when the asteroid struck Earth. In a way, the asteroid was a giant reset button for the planet. After hitting Earth, this space traveler wiped out almost every living thing. The sky was covered with ash, which blocked out sun rays. That meant that plants couldn't grow, and this made a lot of herbivores, like, really hungry. As a result, they had to change their diet and adapt to the new changes. This forced some of those dinosaurs to take on a new path in life, turning into some modern animals we know today. If the asteroid had changed its course just a bit, then dinosaurs would have remained the dominant species. So, what would have happened if dinosaurs had stuck around? Well, first of all, evolution would have played out differently for them. Maybe during those millions of years, humans would not have evolved to be on top of the food chain. Imagine a world where dinosaurs still existed today. If dinosaurs had evolved as humans did, then we'd have to compete with them. There were multiple species of humans, but Homo sapiens, also known as us, prevailed. A humanoid dino or dinoid would be something strange. First of all, they would look different, more reptilian than us. Our brain sizes would differ, and they would be physically bigger and stronger. Putting a human and a dinoid side by side would be interesting. First of all, dinoids would have scales, as opposed to human skin, and their teeth would be sharper. They would probably not have five fingers on each hand, and their nails would be sharp claws. Also, we don't know what they would sound like, but they'd possibly be guttural, like crocodiles. Dinosaurs had very good vision compared to mammals, so it's possible we'd see dinoids with large eyes. The population of Earth has reached a staggering 8 billion people. And we've changed our environment to suit our needs. With that said, if dinoids were the dominant creatures, then the environment would be suited for them. Speaking of physical features, scientists predicted what dinoids would look like if they had evolved into intelligent creatures that walked upright and had opposable thumbs. These wiggly thumbs are important for evolution, since they helped humans start using tools for defending themselves and hunting. The creature may not look like the ideal reptile, and its appearance might not be flattering. But if dinosaurs had evolved, then these creatures could be your classmate or colleague at work. Not all dinosaurs were alike, as their fossils have shown. Some were gigantic, while others resembled any modern-day animal. The biggest land-walking dinosaur was the titanosaur, although the measurements are only rough estimates based on fossilized bones. It's estimated that the dino was around 122 feet long and lived between 100 to 95 million years ago. It was so massive that its weight was equivalent to 18 modern-day elephants. There were dinosaurs all over the world in different time eras, climates, and landscapes. However, only a handful were known as giants. But though they excelled in body size, they lacked in brain size. Some of the most well-known dinosaurs, like the Allosaurus and Stegosaurus, had very small brains, like me, which means it would have been nearly impossible for them to properly evolve into intelligent beings. Tell me about it. But in the late Cretaceous period, the T-Rex roamed the land. It had larger brains than its Allosaurus counterparts, which were millions of years behind. Even so, the T-Rex's brain only weighed just under a pound. A human brain is nearly 3 pounds. It might have been cool to see a T-Rex evolve into an intelligent being with opposable thumbs on its tiny stick hands. Contrary to popular belief, the T-Rex was actually quite slow, and a human could have easily outrun it. So, we know that these days, they wouldn't belong in any competitive sports that involve running. We know that dinosaurs could be herbivores and carnivores. But throughout their evolution, one thing remained the same. They had small brains. Other forms of dinosaurs were around too, such as long-legged and horned dinosaurs. Either way, they were on top of the food chain even when little mammals had cameo appearances. 
We have to consider that when the asteroids struck and wiped out dinosaurs, mammals took over the scene. If dinosaurs and mammals had shared the dominant position in the food chain and had followed a similar path in their evolution, then today's reality would be completely different than what we have now. Dinosaurs would have bigger brains and would compete with humans for the title of the smartest creature. One of the reasons why humans and parrots can talk is because of the strength and shape of our tongues. The evolved dinosaurs would have a different skull, shaped to fit such a tongue, if they wanted to talk like humans. One of the reasons why humans made it to where we are now is because we evolved to stand upright to detect predators. This was one challenge we had to overcome in order to survive. But what would dinosaurs need to challenge if they were already the most dominant creatures? Some of the big brain dinosaurs had long legs, which means they could run fast, detect predators, and grab food that otherwise would be beyond their reach. Their evolutionary path would be very different from that of humans, and maybe even more advanced. Their brains could have evolved into something impressive. They could turn out smarter than us and possess quicker reflexes. Imagine dinosaurs discovering gravity instead of Isaac Newton. Or a dinosaur writing plays and poems better than William Shakespeare. Imagine dinosaurs possessing the creative knowledge to produce some of the finest art in history. Music and cinema would revolve around dinosaur culture, and fashion would look otherworldly. We would live in peace with dinoids, but we would certainly compete with them. The World Cup would feature dinosaurs and humans playing for their national teams, but clubs would be exclusively human or dinosaur. Some professions would be dominated solely by one species, and more physically demanding jobs would be taken by dinosaurs, like laborers and security guards. Eventually, dinosaurs would take over the world since they would be physically stronger than humans and would have better advantages than us. Humans, on the other hand, would need to figure out a way to keep up with dinosaurs. Mammals had a different path of evolution, where they never became gigantic super beasts as dinosaurs did. Instead, their brains developed and grew big. But even though humans are the smartest creatures on the planet, we don't have the biggest brain. Animals like orcas, whales, elephants, and other apes have bigger brains here. So why are we smarter than them? The answer is, we don't know. The brain is the most complex organ we have, and we know so little about it. We don't even know exactly why it's so complex or why it behaves like that. Today's dinosaur descendants, like crows and parrots, have complex brains, which allows them to communicate, use tools, and even count. Bigger doesn't always mean better in this case. A parrot's brain is smaller than a cat's, but it's far more complex and intelligent than that of any feline out there. Some scientists argue that dinosaurs from the movies aren't 100% accurate, and that they used to have feathers. In terms of evolution, some small feathered dinos might have followed the path of primates. They might have evolved into a tree-dwelling primate that may also have followed the path of becoming another species of human. About 800,000 years ago, I wasn't around then, a gigantic asteroid soared through space and plummeted toward Earth. It slammed into our planet with enormous force. It blanketed 10% of Earth with shiny black and green lumps of rocky debris, known as tektites. Tektites are pieces of rock that get liquefied by the heat of a meteorite impact. Then they cool down to look like dark, glassy pebbles. A trail of these tektites was strewn across Southeast Asia and reached all the way to eastern Antarctica. This is how scientists know this giant meteorite crash happened. Well, researchers spent nearly a hundred years trying to find the gigantic crater caused by the impact. But tektites were too widespread. That's why they couldn't pinpoint the exact location. Until recently. A team of experts from different universities tried to discover the ground zero of the meteorite impact. They investigated several craters in China and Cambodia, but none seemed to be created by a meteorite crash. The experts then decided to investigate Laos. It's a country where they discovered the largest and most concentrated number of tektites. After ruling out all visible craters, the team came up with a new theory. What if the crater is hidden by something? In search of the potential crater, the scientists measured gravity readings at different locations all across Laos. 
at the side of an ancient volcanic eruption, below thick, dense layers of cooled volcanic lava, they discovered a severe gravitational anomaly. Ooh. It turned out to be a large, elongated crater, over 300 feet deep and spreading 8 miles wide and 11 miles long. Based on the location and the crater's enormous size, scientists believe this is the impact site of the ancient meteorite. Meanwhile, over 2 billion years ago, long before the age of dinosaurs, Earth was struck by one of the largest asteroids to ever hit our planet. The asteroid was approximately 6 to 9 miles across and created the biggest impact crater on Earth. This is the Vredefort crater. You can find it in present-day South Africa. When it was formed, it had a gigantic diameter of 186 miles. Over the centuries, the massive crater slowly eroded away into the Vredefort Dome. That's a rocky hill formation that was the central side of the asteroid's impact. This formation is so large that it can be seen from space. Today, the Vredefort Dome is a recognized World Heritage Site. It's also home to several towns and communities that encourage tourists to come and visit the ancient crater. In 1943, one pilot strayed from his regular flight path to avoid dangerous weather conditions. Flying over Quebec, Canada, he spotted a large, perfectly circular basin. That is how the Pingualuit crater was discovered. Around 1.4 million years ago, a meteorite hit this spot, creating this small but deep impact crater. It has a diameter of 2 miles and a depth of 1,300 feet. A lake of deep blue water has formed at the bottom of the crater. It's said that this lake contains some of the purest water in the world as it has no inlets or outlets. It means that the lake is only filled by rains and melting snow. The lake is home to one species of fish, the Arctic char. The Sudbury Basin is also in Canada. Formed over 1.8 billion years ago, it's one of the largest and oldest impact craters in the world. It's located in Ontario. But the impact from the collision was so powerful that debris from it was found 500 miles away in Minnesota. Unlike most impact craters that have a circular shape, the Sudbury Basin is an oval. It's 39 miles long with a width of 19 miles. The original impact site might have been a whopping 10 miles deep, but its modern-day version is much shallower. The asteroid that created the basin carried a high concentration of natural minerals. This made the soil in the crater incredibly fruitful. Today, its floor is home to numerous fruit and vegetable farms. The unique crater formation of Sudbury Basin was used to train Apollo astronauts before they embarked on their missions to the moon. Perhaps the most famous meteorite of all is the Chicxulub. That's the meteorite responsible for wiping out 75% of all plant and animal life on Earth, including the dinosaurs. The Chicxulub meteorite had a diameter of 6 miles when it struck Earth 66 million years ago. The crater now lies off the coast of Mexico, hidden deep beneath the seabed. It's around 93 miles across and 12 miles in depth. Recently, scientists managed to drill deep down into the highest peak of the impact crater to collect rock samples. They discovered that the disappearance of dinosaurs wasn't caused by the giant size of the meteorite or the scale of the blast. It was because of the exact location where the Chicxulub hit Earth. The meteorite struck part of our planet that was densely filled with a mineral compound called gypsum. It's a soft sulfate mineral that is typically used as a fertilizer. The collision blasted so much sulfur into the air that it blocked out the sun. This caused the prolonged dark winter that doomed the dinosaurs. One of the youngest craters on Earth is the Behringer Crater in Winslow, Arizona. The Behringer Crater is also one of the best-preserved craters on Earth. It was formed 50,000 years ago when a heavy meteorite made mostly of iron plummeted down from space. Earth's atmosphere barely slowed down the massive chunk of metal. It collided with the ground with incredible force. The meteorite vaporized upon impact, leaving very few remains. The crater left by this powerful explosion was named after the man who identified it in 1903. It was a mining engineer named Daniel Behringer. The diameter of the crater is 3,900 feet, and it goes 560 feet deep. The Behringer family still owns the impact site to this day. You can visit the crater and take a guided tour around its rim. The Papagai Crater in Siberia is one of the most interesting craters on Earth. An asteroid impact over 35 million years ago formed this massive basin. The crater is 62 miles across, which makes it the fourth largest one in the world. This crater is unique as it's home to one of the largest diamond deposits in the world.
The intense pressure from the collision transformed the graphite at the impact site into diamonds. Scientists say that the crater contains trillions of carats of diamonds, but no one has ever mined them due to the site's remote location and lack of infrastructure. In the year 1530 BCE, a meteoroid entered Earth's atmosphere before shattering into pieces. The meteorite's burning fragments rained down on Earth and crashed into the planet's surface. As a result, a group of craters appeared on a small Estonian island, Sarama. The largest crater is a 360-foot-wide perfect circle. It's 70 feet deep and filled with blue water. Eight smaller craters that appeared during the collision can be found within a half-mile radius of the largest crater. The impact of the meteorite fragments caused the trees on the islands to catch fire. Almost all forests burned down. Luckily, the woodlands have now grown back, and the craters are a popular hiking destination for tourists. A meteorite struck the area we now know as Quebec, Canada, around 200 million years ago. This collision created the sixth largest impact crater in the world. It had a diameter of 40 miles. Over the century, the outer rim of the crater has filled up with water. It's now known as Manicougan Reservoir. The impact crater lake is so large it can be seen from space, and its strange shape gave the lake its nickname, the Eye of Quebec. The oldest meteorite crater in the world is in Western Australia. The Yarrabooba Crater is 2.2 billion years old. Well, that gets my vote for the best crater name. The impact site is so ancient that the original crater has completely eroded away. Yarrabooba's diameter was around 19 to 43 miles. Scientists managed to figure out the age of the impact site by analyzing the ancient crystals and minerals found within the crater. The problem with that asteroid that destroyed dinosaurs was not that it fell, but where it fell. This colossal space rock found the worst place where it could land. Also, the angle at which it hit the ground was the most unfortunate. If it had fallen vertically, there would have been less destruction but it fell at such an angle that it threw a huge amount of dust into the air. After the disaster occurred, tons of soot started burning. 65 million years ago, only 13% of Earth's surface contained the right amount of sulfur and oil needed to form a colossal amount of soot. If the asteroid had fallen on the other 87% of the territory, dinosaurs could still be living today, but it hit the worst place and lifted a million tons of burning material into the sky. A cloud of incandescent particles covered the sky and set off on a journey across the mainland. Then, these particles settled on the ground and caused large-scale fires. Trees were burning and sending more soot into the sky. But the asteroid collided not only with rocks, it fell on the coast in a place where the seabed was filled with sulfate. As a result of the collision, it started burning, which caused the release of sulfuric acid into the atmosphere. The air became poisoned. It seems the dinosaurs didn't stand a chance. And now, let's imagine the asteroid falling in another place, somewhere in the middle of the ocean. Huge waves flooded part of the land, but almost all kinds of dinosaurs survived. Or even better, the rock could have fallen somewhere in the desert and left behind a giant crater. That's all. Yes, several dinosaurs passing by wouldn't have survived the collision, but the situation wouldn't have been so critical in general. So, giant lizards remain dominant on our planet. They don't allow other animals to develop since Tyrannosaurus and other ferocious reptiles hunt mammoths and other ancient creatures. The population of mammals is decreasing. Velociraptors are fighting for territories with saber-toothed tigers and giant bears. A struggle for survival between dinosaurs and other animals begins. Then, the Ice Age comes and some reptiles don't survive. Then, new players enter the field. Those are humans' early ancestors. Living side by side with dinosaurs is difficult. Lizards attack settlements and caves, so people have to build high walls for protection. By the way, the Tyrannosaurus poses less danger to people than you might have thought. According to the latest research, many creatures were able to run away from this monster. Yes, you probably saw how easily they caught up with cars in the movies, but it wouldn't be as scary in reality. Paleontologists and biologists have analyzed the strength of dino's bones and found out that the creature couldn't reach high speeds. The maximum it was capable of was running twice as slow as a field athlete. Thousands of years have passed. 
people have learned to live with dinosaurs. They've even managed to tame some lizards. They've domesticated herbivorous dinosaurs to develop agriculture. Triceratopses and bulls now plow fields together. Imagine farms swarming with Diplodocuses or Brachiosauruses. People climb their long necks and pick fruit from high trees. Stegosauruses protect pastures from wolves and velociraptors. Dinosaurs with shells, such as Ankylosauruses, help people across deserts. They, along with camels and donkeys, carry heavy loads. People share the planet with ancient lizards and live in harmony. The situation in the seas and oceans is much worse. Sea reptiles attack wooden ships and catch all the fish. Imagine that you're sailing to another continent with tons of grain, fabrics, fur, and other goods. And then a giant mosasaur appears on the horizon. It's one of the most powerful sea lizards. A great white shark looks like a small fish next to it. The creature could easily defeat a megalodon. And then it comes across a wooden ship. It bites into the deck and pulls the whole boat underwater. Water dinosaurs are the main obstacle to communication between countries. This slows the progress down for a hundred years. People built metal ships to withstand the attacks of the Mosasaur. And finally, they managed to establish sea connections. A similar problem occurs when the first planes take off into the sky. Imagine you're flying on a passenger Boeing. You look out of the window and see a pterodactyl. Ah, wait, it's impossible. These winged lizards aren't so fast, but they can catch up with a helicopter or some old biplanes. This poses a serious threat to flights, so people install sound protection systems on board each aircraft. Pterodactyls hear irritating ultrasound from a distance and fly as far away from it as possible. People equip submarines and ships with the same sound shields. Then, after people have learned how to defend themselves from dinosaurs, another problem appears. Lizards are the kings of wildlife, so they displace all other animal species. Dinosaurs run across African savannas, and lizards with fur live in cold winter forests. Lions, wolves, and bears are not the rulers of the wild. Rhinos fight with Parasaurolophuses. Stegosauruses attack hippos and take away their territories. Venomous dinosaurs live in jungles. Lizards that can climb trees scare monkeys. Imagine a reptilian ape jumping from one branch to another. To save regular animals from extinction, people have to control the population of predatory reptiles. Huge parks and nature reserves appear in all countries. People transport dinosaurs there and separate them from other wildlife. Dinosaurs seem to be completely under control. When the danger caused by giant reptiles passes, people begin to breed smaller, harmless lizards. Someone buys a chameleon, and someone keeps a microceratus at home. There are dinosaur exhibitions. People take these creatures for a walk as if they were dogs. Some people take selfies with reptiles, go shopping, and sit in cafes with small lizards. Dinosaurs aren't formidable now. They're kinda cute. People ride horses, camels, Parasaurolophysis and Pachycephalosauruses. Of course, many have tried to tame Velociraptors, but failed. Those are dangerous reptiles and they don't know how to obey. Taming them is almost as difficult as taming an alligator. But dogs and cats are still more popular because they're more intelligent. The brain of a dinosaur is almost as same as that of a chicken. But who knows, if they had lived to this day, perhaps they would have evolved into smarter creatures. Just imagine if dinos were intelligent. In this case, people would have a big problem. Some scientists think that even if a meteorite hadn't destroyed the dinosaurs, they wouldn't have survived to this day. They needed to carry their own colossal weight at all times. It was an enormous load on their bones and joints. Most dinosaurs wouldn't have been able to survive the Ice Age with such characteristics, but smaller lizards might have succeeded. Fast and agile dinosaurs such as Velociraptors and Pachycephalosauruses would have survived, but in what form? Could dinosaurs have already evolved into something else? Look at the good old chicken. Many scientists believe it's a direct descendant of the formidable Tyrannosaurus. Somewhere deep inside the bird's DNA, there are genes that the dinosaur had. Yep, it's hard to believe, but look at the chicken's body structure and how it walks. Remove the plumage, Cover the creature with scales and give it toothy jaws instead of a beak. And now, you have a mini T-Rex in the coop.
And by the way, not only chickens might be the relatives of giant lizards, many birds are dinosaurs' living descendants. Surprisingly, alligators, snakes, crocodiles, and monitor lizards are not as close to ancient reptiles as pelicans, storks, and other flying creatures. Over millions of years of evolution, the paws of dinosaurs turned into wings and toothy elongated jaws ended up as beaks. The genetics of birds is the key to understanding dinosaurs. Pelicans are similar to pterodactyls, ostriches to velociraptors. Perhaps many other animals also share some genes with ancient lizards. If the meteorite hadn't fallen, all dinosaurs would have evolved into completely different, unusual creatures. Scientists want to carefully study the DNA of birds and try to reverse evolution with the help of genetic engineering. They hope to breed dinosaurs out of eggs one day. But to do this, they need to find a specific genome that hasn't changed over tens of millions of years. It hides in the DNA. And it's not so easy to find it and extract it. Do you think we will see powerful reptiles by 2050? We've all been afraid of the dark at some point in our lives, haven't we? I mean, do you remember getting tucked into bed by your mom or dad after they read you some scary fairy tale with monsters and dragons or even dinosaurs? But just as your parents were about to turn the lights off and silently step out of your room, you remembered. What if there was something hiding under your bed? Or worse, what if some spooky creature was stuck somewhere in the closet? You could probably get up and check, but it was too dark out there. Wouldn't it be great to have some source of light that would come from within your body? You could always use it whenever you get surrounded by darkness. Unfortunately, as humans, we aren't able to do that. But there are a bunch of creatures out there that can, in fact, light themselves up. That's thanks to a little something scientists call bioluminescence. Animals and fish living in the ocean tend to have this talent more often than others. And you can find these creatures anywhere close to the surface or deep down at the bottom. 2.5 miles deep if you have a knack for numbers. These creatures use their light for a lot of things, like communicating with other members of their species, luring in prey, and even scaring away enemies. Bioluminescence is basically an organism's ability to emit its own light. Chemistry has a lot to do with it. Such animals use two chemicals, one called luciferin, and the other called luciferase. Add a bit of oxygen and BAM! Light! Should you ever wonder if you actually observe bioluminescence or if someone just dropped a glow stick in the ocean, be on the lookout for neon blue, green, or even red sparkles in the sea. They're usually spread over a large area. This can even make the water look like glitter or a starry sky. You can thank squid, tiny crustaceans, and algae for this romantic atmosphere. Now, I've got another unusual phenomenon for you. How about a golden waterfall? I'm not kidding, it actually exists, and it's a natural phenomenon. To see it, you have to drive to Yosemite National Park to the Horsetail Fall. Make sure to plan your trip in winter or early spring. That's the only time during the year when you can see this awesome phenomenon. It doesn't need any scientific explanation. It's nothing more than sunlight at dusk hitting the waterfall in such a unique way that it makes it look like a river of lava. Or gold, your choice. That's the reason why during this time of year, the horsetail fall is also named the firefall. Unfortunately, this phenomenon is becoming less and less visible within the years, mostly because of drought and other issues connecting with the melting of snow. So, should you ever decide to visit, Keep an eye on the waterfall, since the effect is very brief. Ever heard of a dirty thunderstorm? It's also called volcanic lightning. Apparently, specialists looking into the phenomenon have yet to fully grasp what it is. When a regular thunderstorm happens, particles with positive and negative charges collide, hence the giant spark we call lightning. It also makes a lot of noise, which you can recognize as thunder. But when a volcano is erupting, some of the volcanic ash particles get electrically charged, and while getting projected into the air with a huge force, they collide and cause electrical discharges. This whole process makes it look like there's lightning coming from the volcano itself. Imagine all that ash, gas, and smoke coming from the crater, and then add some electricity to the mix. 
It'll make the whole picture look really bizarre. No wonder this phenomenon is called the dirty thunderstorm. Now, how about clouds that look like waves? Those are called Asparitas clouds, and they're actually quite close to the ground, unlike your regular day-to-day -day clouds. The name comes from the word aspero, which in Latin translates to rough or uneven. On rare occasion, you may spot such clouds when the weather is calm, but they're mostly associated with thunderstorms. These clouds appear during unstable atmospheric conditions, and surprisingly, they don't produce rain. Even though they do resemble dark storm-like clouds, they also create random patterns, tricking your eyes into thinking you're looking at the surface of the sea from under the water. Another impressive kind of cloud is called Mamatus clouds. What makes them so special is a series of bulges emerging from the base of each cloud. One such cloud enters a level in the atmosphere where the wind direction changes. You can see these wave-like patterns in the sky. Australia is the place for you if you like surfing, but not all the waves you can catch there are made of water. Near a town called Hayden, there's a mysterious wave made out of rocks. This granite formation supposedly dates back to 2.63 billion years ago. That's way before dinosaurs started hanging around the planet. Standing at 49 feet high and 360 feet long, the wave was formed as a result of two processes, weathering and erosion. There's softer sediment at the base of the wave rock, which was chemically weathered by groundwater. Winds and rain did the rest of the job, causing the erosion of the rest of the formation. Its red, yellow, and gray stripes are made of iron hydroxide, carbonates, and other chemical compounds that were washed down by the rain. You've made it to Australia, so stick around a bit more. There's one more location here that seems unreal. You'll need to fly over this one, however, if you want the best picture. In the western part of the country, surrounded by green woodlands, there's a series of lakes. They're all a staggering shade of bright pink. Out of them all, the most famous is Lake Hillier, a 2,000-foot-long reservoir. It's surrounded by both sand and a forest of eucalyptus trees. This makes the cartoon-like hue of the lake stand out even more. One of the many theories explaining the color of these mysterious lakes is connected with algae. These algae appear to gather high levels of a substance called beta-carotene, which has a red-orange pigment in it. Another explanation involves haloarchaea. Those are microorganisms that sometimes look red. Even if you don't enjoy flying, the lakes are great for taking a swim. They're not toxic, even though they have loads of salt in them. This means you'll be able to stay afloat easily, and the water won't damage your swimsuit. During winter up north in Canada, a bizarre phenomenon happens at Lake Abraham in Alberta. Underneath the frozen surface, you can spot some weird objects that look like frozen jellyfish. It's definitely not the case, as these creepy formations are just frozen methane bubbles. Those are pockets of gas that were trapped underwater and got stuck there after the lake had frozen. They appear when leaves and grass fall into the water and bacteria digest them. This process transforms them into methane. This phenomenon is as beautiful and strange as it is dangerous. The pockets of methane can easily become highly flammable. When the temperatures rise during the spring, the ice melts and these bubbles start popping and fizzing. It's a spectacular sight to observe. Picture a lake filled with soda. Remember not to bring any source of fire. It can be very dangerous for visitors. You can check out these types of lakes all across Canada's Banff National Park. Nature often tends to make its own music. Just listen to the sound of crickets at night or the soothing noise of a waterfall. But in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, there's a strange geological phenomenon which takes nature soundtracks to a completely different level. These are called the ringing rocks, and scientists still can't explain their unusual behavior. If you strike these rocks with a heavy object, like a hammer or another rock, the stones will make a ringing sound, as if they were hollow, but they're not. 
What makes the ringing rocks even more bizarre, apart from the mysterious sound they make, is that no animal wants to hang around there. Even though the rocks are surrounded by a thick forest, scientists haven't managed to trace any animal activity in the area yet. Even more striking is the fact that despite all the trees around the rocks, you won't find any leaves lying on the boulders. What makes these rocks so unappealing for both animals and vegetation is still up for debate. You're picking some veggies in the garden. When you come across something big and round, it's covered in soil. When you dig it out, you find out it's a giant egg, bigger than one of an ostrich. But you don't have any chickens or ducks. And even if you did, none of those animals could lay an egg of that size. You pick it up. It seems real. You take the egg inside and build an incubator for it. A couple of days pass, but nothing. You go on with your life and forget about the egg's existence. You've been working in your garden all day long. All you want now is to get into a tub filled with hot water and have some dinner later. But while you're eating, you hear some noise coming out of the room with the incubator. You ignore it, thinking it's just some mice scampering around. But then the sound intensifies. You head there and see the eggshell cracking. In a couple of minutes, something begins to crawl out. You grab your phone and immediately start filming it. A tiny reptile pokes out of the now broken egg and starts examining its surroundings. You're shocked. You place your phone on a special platform to keep filming the creature. Meanwhile, you grab your laptop and begin researching what animal it could be. The creature doesn't have the snout of an alligator nor does it look like a Komodo dragon. You go back to your dinner and feed the reptile some leftover meatloaf. It gulps the food down in a flash. The next day, you build a small terrarium to keep an eye on your new pet. Over the following weeks, you record every second of its life. You call the reptile Buster. The creature has already grown to the size of a dog. It runs fast and jumps pretty high too. You think it might be some new reptile species. But it doesn't crawl like an alligator or a lizard. Your pet has two tiny arms and large legs. Its jaws are massive for an animal its size. The reptile also has razor-sharp teeth. Your friend comes over for a movie. At one point, your reptile runs into the living room and starts biting the furniture. Your friend freaks out and starts yelling, DINOSAUR! You calm him down and take the dino to the garage. You explain to your friend how you found the animal and he tells you to contact someone to examine it. The next day, you take Buster to the vet and take a seat in the waiting room. You keep your pet in a cage so that no one can see it. But the dino starts growling in a strange way. Many people grab their pets and move away from you. It's finally your turn. You bring Buster in and show it to the veterinarian. The man looks shocked. He puts the creature on a metal examination table and starts looking closely at its features. Sharp teeth and claws scaly skin. The vet tells you you've been raising a T-Rex for three weeks. He calls in other specialists to examine the animal. The next thing you know, you're in a lab with a bunch of scientists studying Buster. You sit there anxiously as they collect its DNA samples. They even ask for the footage you've been recording. After a couple of hours, they come back and tell you that you indeed have a dinosaur. They'll have to keep Buster in the lab to conduct further studies. So you go home, feeling a bit lonely. A couple of years pass. Now you have a degree in paleontology, specializing in T-Rexes. You've been working with the lab and monitoring Buster that has turned into a fully grown dino. You also teach at the university and have published a book called My T-Rex Buster. It has become a bestseller. One day, you come back from the university and turn on the TV. That's when you hear breaking news. A large creature has broken out of a lab outside the city. It's now on the loose. They show several images of the beast's footprints that lead to the forest. You get a call from the lab. They ask you to head down there as fast as you can. The researchers tell you what's happened and ask you to accompany them to the forest to find the dino. You put on a special protective suit and get into a jeep. After a couple of hours, you arrive at the spot where Buster was last seen. You get out and try to follow its footprints, but the rain has removed the marks the creature left almost completely. The scientists check the tracking device placed under the dino's skin, but it's not working. They bring some food Buster likes to try to lure it out. After a couple of hours, there's no news. 
It's already night when you hear some rumbling in the distance. Everyone jolts awake. People around you are on high alert. You hide and wait. A large shadow the size of a school bus appears from the dark. A fully grown T-Rex can reach 40 feet long and 12 feet high. The giant lizard approaches the meat and sniffs it. After a couple of moments, it runs off. Everyone gets out of their hiding places and tries to follow the animal. The meat has a special substance in it. It was supposed to put the dino to sleep. This way, it wouldn't be a problem to bring it back to the lab. But the dino was smart enough to feel something suspicious. Despite its size, the T-Rex is quite slow. It can move at a speed of only 12 miles per hour and can't even outrun a human. But Buster somehow manages to cross a raging river and disappears into the dark forest. No one has been prepared to make it through such an obstacle, so the whole team makes a detour through the mountains. It's a difficult climb, with everyone carrying the equipment needed to catch the T-Rex. From the height of the mountain, you can see almost all the forest. Far away, treetops are shaking. The giant reptile is heading to the north. Everyone tries to get to the other side of the mountain as fast as they can. But then, one of the crew members slips and falls. Good thing a safety rope holds her in place. You pull the woman back to the path. You continue walking until you reach a cave. Everyone puts on their helmets with flashlights and goes inside. The deeper you go into the cave, the smaller it gets, so you have to crawl to get through. The rocks are sharp, and there's water everywhere. It's easy to get lost in here. The cave starts trembling. Everyone rushes to get through the narrowest part. You finally make it out of the cave. That's when you find out that the cave was trembling because of the T-Rex. It was stomping around the mountain. It spots your group and starts running towards you. People panic and rush back into the cave. The T-Rex catches up with your team and tries to snatch someone. But by that moment, everyone is already safely tucked inside the cave. Suddenly you scream, Buster! Shockingly, it seems to calm the creature down. You step outside, even though everyone is trying to hold you back. You get outside and face the massive creature. It's just staring at you. You slowly approach it, trying not to make any sudden moves. Someone from inside the cave gasps. It startles Buster. It starts thrashing and roaring, but you are still there, trying to calm the animal down. Eventually, it gets quieter and comes closer. You put your hand on its head, caressing it. After a few seconds, someone inside the cave steps on a twig and it cracks. The T-Rex jolts and runs away. You're furious. Now, you have to track it once again. After you spend many more hours in the forest, the sun starts to rise. Everyone is exhausted and about to pass out. You decide to call it a day and head back home. But as soon as your team gathers near the jeeps, you receive a notification that a giant T-Rex has entered the city. A helicopter picks up you and the other team members. There isn't enough room for everyone, so several people stay behind, waiting for the next chopper. The T-Rex is dashing through traffic. People in the streets are running for their lives. Dozens of news companies are filming the incident. Many people are posting it on social media. The dino breaks into the mall and destroys everything it sees. Your helicopter lands and you get out, trying to think of a way to calm the creature down. You rush into the mall, but the T-Rex has already run away to the other side of the building and managed to escape. You're following it, but suddenly you get a phone call saying that the team members left behind in the forest have spotted your T-Rex. You can even see the live footage of the animal. That means there are two giant reptiles on the loose in your state.